You are in for a real treat. This episode was originally recorded for my other podcast, but for you, it's been upgraded and transformed, and now you have the Ask the Pro show. So everything mentioned in this episode will now be found on chrisdufay.com, plus so much more, as I've designed the Ask the Pro podcast and chrisdufay.com to give you exactly what you need to grow your business success and for you to have the money, the freedom, and the happiness you want want, making a bigger and better impact to the world unselfishly. So now it's time to delve straight into this episode and I want you to lap up and enjoy every single second of it. My brother from another mother, Ryan, it is phenomenal to get you on the call. We've been trying to tee this bad boy up for a little while and I welcome you to the Turning Pro Academy And I'm thrilled to finally get you on this bad boy because I really want to showcase you. I think you are absolutely killing it. You're doing really well. And I know you've got some deep, nasty, dirty, awesome, phenomenal insights for the listener. So Ryan, hola. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. You know, I got to say, you know, I'm, I'm very in my element when we do training and nutrition podcasts, but you know, this is a business podcast. So I got to throw this out there. This could be the worst advice that anyone is getting <laughs> because you're going to get business advice from a non-business man. There's going to be no marketing funnel talk or sales copy talk, but I think I can give some principles that will put listeners in the right place at the right time. You know, everyone talks about, oh, you got so lucky, lucky this, lucky that. Eh, it's not quite luck. Yeah. There's some things you can do to get in the right place at the right time, but I'm excited to be here. I'm going to do my best and uh, this should be fun as always. I think you've br- brought up a great point because I don't want to be delving down what is marketing copy, what is sales funnels, all that like mumbo jumbo. This is just the broad facts of how someone has absolutely cemented themselves in the health and fitness industry and you're doing such a bang up job. So this is going to be great. Now, before we kind of get into everything, just tell the listener, who is Ryan? How'd you get started in the industry? Why are you so phenomenal? Oh, well, you know, I'm pretty awesome, you know, just because my mommy told me so, right? Uh, <laughs> That's what everyone thinks. No, you know, my start in the industry began kind of a long time ago. I started training when I was in eighth grade because I was the fat kid that got bullied. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I wanted to get better at sports. I played basketball. I loved it. And uh, I grew to enjoy the actual training more than I enjoyed the sport. So in college, I started personal training people, those poor people. I need to reach out to them and refund their money because I was horrible back then. I had a quote unquote certification. So I was, I was legit, but I was doing horrible programs, horrible coaching, uh, horrible mentoring on all fronts. But that's how you learn. You make mistakes. After college, I uh, worked as an NCAA Division One strength and conditioning coach, uh, going from intern all the way through assistant director of strength and conditioning. I also spent six years in the military in there. And then um, I worked for two years for Charles Poliquin, traveling uh, around the world with him on the lecture circuit and creating new course material for the Poliquin Strength Institute. And let's see, that would bring me to 20. 20- 2013. And then uh, in 2013, I started uh, doing it on my own full time with my own consulting business. So that's where we're at. Oh, yeah. Now, we first met, I remember this super clear in Rhode Island. You were presenting and you put me through a 60 minute calf workout. And I was just like, oh, I'm just going to crush it. I'm just going to show this big unit of Orion, my baby cows. And no, I couldn't walk for the next few days. So you definitely I had me on that, that one. You had we, me were on in, that one. we were in that back room. Just yeah, getting it was after. just only calf no. machines. That's right. You know, it's funny. Charles, Charles is a big calf guy. He loves doing calves and he's kind of famous for his 60 minute calf routine. So one day, um, one day we were, we were in Rhode Island together. Charles and I were, and we did the night before we were like, Hey, let's do calves in the morning. We'll do, we'll do an hour calf routine. And, uh, he kind of let me lead the way on it. And so we did this brutal routine and I was doing stuff that he, even he didn't do. So normally he would just do the machines. He would do different pauses, different foot positions. I was throwing in like plyometric jumps. So you get the rapid eccentric too. So we do that for 60 straight minutes and then we teach for the day. And then later that day, he was walking out to his car. I go, dude, where are you going? He goes, I'm heading back to the condo. I said, no, you're not. I said, we have another calf workout to do. So then we did a the same thing in the PM, not the exact same thing, but a different, you know, different series for a second 60 minute calf routine in the same day. And we were, dude, we were screwed. He was texting me (laughs) 10. He texted me 10 days later, said, you're a bastard. My calves are still killing me. (laughs) 
That's quality. Now, the other thing I know, like, obviously, this is just talking training because we love this shit. What is the heaviest good morning you've done? This blows me away. I just, I just, oh. I want to just blow some <laughs> smoke up your way. I did 483 pounds for three reps. You're um, disgusting. What? So that's uh, 200 and what? 219 kilos, maybe something yes. like that. Yeah. So that, that's my best good morning. Uh, it's, a, it's an exercise. I always love doing it because it always helped my squat and my deadlift quite a bit. Um, and, it's, and it's fun to do. People look at you like you're crazy. You know, you always <laughs> hear, oh, you're going to hurt your back. You're going to hurt your back. It's like funny. I have a very strong back that yeah. never hurt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, because of it. You know. Yeah. Right. So you've obviously, Ryan, you've done a lot of different roles in the industry what have you actually what have you enjoyed the most or what have you gotten the most out of oh man you know it's it's interesting because i've garnered uh experience from each facet you know and, and when i was a college strength coach i really learned how to manage group settings i mean there's times you have uh 20 50 athletes in the gym at once that you're trying to manage them all in, in terms of individualizing workouts and and supervising and teaching and coaching that's an invaluable skill to learn how to work with a large group of people you know Mm -hmm. There was one time I was the lone person, was just myself with a 105 people, uh, 105 football players in the weight room. So, I mean, you learn a lot about how to manage a large group. You know, then I go to work for Charles and what was interesting there, I took so much away in terms of being a teacher, how to express and how to, how to teach better and and learning advanced concepts and teaching advanced concepts. I thought that was fantastic. So, and now, you know, a lot of my business is online. I've learned a ton about communicating with people via email and how to read people's tone in their emails to understand what they need and how to, how to modify diets online without being there in person, you know, all that stuff. So each step of the way, I've, I've really learned a ton. That's a really good point that you've made there, Ryan. Each is along those steps that you've kind of mentioned along is always been a communication factor and how important communication is no matter what the setting or business model really is that you're using. And especially, I think that's a great thing that I think so many trainers overlook is when wanting to go into the online game and especially online personal training is it is very difficult to be able to grasp how best to coach someone when the communication is so different. You can't see them face to face. You don't see their tone or their body language and you've got to only use their words about what's going through email or skype if you're using that say calls or anything so that's a really good point that you've brought up yeah it's, it's definitely uh you know it's definitely a, a more difficult situation but i'm learning to adapt to it more you know yeah. some people you have to communicate with people the way that they want to be communicated with ultimately so i have some clients that are you know business execs that whenever they send me an email it's literally like five words it's very brief it's to the point <laughs> And that's how I, I respond cars. back. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I respond <laughs> back. You don't get carbs done. And then I have other people that write me, you know, a long diatribe with full of emotion yeah. and things yeah. like that. And so I have to kind of, uh, not that I'm writing emotional things back, but I'm, I'm kind of holding their hand a little more, kind yeah. of expounding a little more on principles. So you definitely have to communicate with your clients how they are best communicated to. That's a good point. And I always enjoy getting those emails from those clients. You kind of see them when you first open it up. You know, oh, I've got to strap myself in for this one. You can see it's exactly. a couple pages long. It's like, all right, get ready for this one, bad boy. Let's go. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, okay. and I tried to. Yeah, sorry, go. I was just going to say, I try to put communication rules in place um, just to keep it mm. brief. So all my clients have a, a kind of a set of rules that they that I ask them to comply to when they send an email. And some do, some don't. I always kind of gently remind them, but it, it also helps me get as much information as possible without having to wade through pages and pages of emails and questions buried in paragraphs of stories of another story of another question. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like, a really good segue, Ryan, because that's something that I learned through making mistakes was especially with dealing with online clients was now that all my clients have to check in on Fridays. I need everything sorted, their weight, their photos, girth measurements all come through on Fridays because I know I have to sit down and, and schedule my time to give that TLC needed for each one of them at a certain time on a certain right. day. And they obviously have access to questions, everything like that. But I remember I first started, I would actually, because when I first started the online personal training, I was actually living in Dubai. And so I gave all my clients WhatsApp access to me. Um, oh. <laughs> and well, obviously you, 
I know the first person that was like, this is a no-go was my wife, Lauren, because all these messages were coming through. And right. there's me like giving the love, making sure I give the time and effort going into these messages. And it's like, no, 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 this isn't going to work. And then when you really look at it, you actually don't give the best quality responses if it's just on the fly as well. Not at all. I like to yeah. have all the information in front of me, everything of their history right in front of me so then I can give the best quality feedback. Exactly. Uh, and it keeps I would my never wife happy. Yeah. Happy wife. Happy oh, wife. And <laughs> that's so true. I would never give client access to text or mm. WhatsApp just for that very reason. Poor, you end up with poor communication and it stresses you out. You're going to be poor at your job if you're getting blown up when you're trying to relax, like you're watching yeah. TV and your phone's blown up. You're out to dinner with friends and your phone's blown up. It's just another level of stress that you don't need. Yeah. You need to set aside work time as being work time and, you know, play time is play time. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in a split with so much more for you. Now, I know you're listening and tuning in because you know how important your health is and how this can also catapult your business. This is why I'm very happy to say that this podcast is sponsored by My Body Blends and my favorite, the Superfood Elixir, the powerful greens drink. Now, this is designed specially to boost energy aids detoxification, enhances the ability to burn fat, supports healthy carbohydrate metabolism, and best of all, is voted best tasting green drink. Now, myself and the My Body Blends team are looking for ambassadors to join, so you and your clients get the health benefits plus adding in a strong income stream for you and your business. The ambassador program, which is by application only, means you get exclusive access to sell my body blends products like Superfood Elixir to your clients, plus giving you the special ambassador pricing and bonuses. So once you become an ambassador, you can join the other top health and fitness players that are adding thousands to their week's income. Now, there is only a limited number of ambassadors we are taking on board as this is a tribe leading the way together. So to apply and to join, go to mybodyblend.com forward slash ambassador or add the checkout code that is turning pro or one word when you're going to get your own superfood elixir to order plus you're going to get free shipping and a bonus to save yourself over $250 instantly so just use that coupon code turning pro in the checkout and you can save over 250 right now all on mybodyblends.com no, actually, sorry, I, I lie. The only time someone does get that kind of exclusiveness is if they're competing and it's kind of like their peak week or it's like yes. the day before, day of kind of thing. Um, yes. Luckily, obviously, like I just competed on the weekend and I had two clients that did really well. Like obviously I was there so I could like walk up to them, look at them and then obviously call it on the spot. But um, Absolutely. And I, and I do the same thing, but I give, you know, it's literally, it's literally just like the last couple of days. Like I don't even give them access the entire peak week because the, the first part of the week is relatively straightforward. It's really like the last couple of days when we need to make finite adjustments or the day of. But yeah, other than that, no phone access. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So at the moment, the way that you're working with your online business. So let's break it down into kind of what's going on with yourself, Ryan. So you've got okay. the online coaching. You also do mentoring for personal trainers as well and selling online online products. Have I, have I nailed this one? Yes. So, so basically, you know, I have an ebook series, uh, the fat loss solution. I have customized private online coaching. I also have group online coaching, um, where everyone's doing the same program and I'm kind of walking them through it. Awesome. Um, I do Skype consultation and mentorships. I do muscle camps. Um, I do some lecture and seminar series, affiliate supplement sales, Hopefully, my real estate empire will be next. Boom. Uh, basically, and the reason I have all that stuff, you know, some people say, oh, you need to just focus on one thing. My thing is, you know, you have to have a backup plan and multiple revenue streams. You know, you may you may have made great. You made $30,000 in your first month on your ebook. But what happens when some government law shuts down ClickBank? Or yep. what happens when, uh, you know, 
the affiliates drop off and you no longer have those people mailing for your book. You know, and I also think you need to put your money to work outside the fitness industry to some degree. Oh, um, yes, very and, true. And, and that's why I'm going to get into real estate investing because my thing is thinking about the future. You know, can you can you still do shirtless YouTube videos that people will give a shit about when you're 60 years old? You know, <laughs> you and will, for most no people, it, yeah, for most people, the answer is no. My body is breaking down now at age 32. I, you know, I'm, I've had four shoulder surgeries hip issues. A lot of it's genetic, Mm -hmm. but you know, I'm not going to be able to do a lot of that stuff when I'm older. What happens when you get in a car wreck and you can't do your YouTube videos, you know? So a lot of trainers, I don't think, think about this. And so I think it's incredibly important to, you know, you have to certainly focus on the fitness stuff, but you need to put money to work outside the fitness industry and you need to think about multiple revenue streams. So I'm always, I'm always kind of thinking for that next big idea. You know, like the one dude that the dude that invented the freaking credit card magnet, right? Like Mm -hmm. the little Mm -hmm. swipe strip like how rich is that dude yeah, <laughs> yeah not very true and i think that's a good point because you kind of have the first tier of personal trainers they're doing the face-to-face work and then obviously i was in that realm years ago but then it's like you ask yourself well how long can you do this for and your income is capped severely because you are just a time for money slave And then it's kind of like, okay, well, then you take the next step up. If you're doing just say just online personal training, again, that's still a time for money business that you're running. It's more leveraged, absolutely. But then you kind of do it. And that's why it's so important as what you just said, multiple revenue streams and to look outside the fitness industry as well. Like if you're a fucking entrepreneur, Be an entrepreneur in all realms and kind of have that mindset going in all facets of life. Exactly. And, you know, and that's why real estate for me is next because, you know, people always need a place to live, period. So, and and yeah, the market fluctuates, but as evidence showed, as long as you stay in long enough, you will be successful. Um, You can't just jump in and jump out, but you got to be in it for the long haul. So that's why, that's why that's going to be my next thing. Because again, the fitness side of things in terms of the coaching, you know, as you said, it's still a big time commitment on my part Mm -hmm. to do a great job with clients. It's a huge time commitment. And also, you know, with, with eBooks, there's going to come... I'm convinced the market is getting so oh, saturated. So There's going to become sure. a time that eBooks just aren't going to really go anymore unless you are somebody, you know, unless you're already a celebrity, unless you're already um, an athlete. I think people are going to struggle. I mean, heck, I, I still struggle with the eBook side of things, to be honest. You know, it's just uh, it, it's something that is not always going to be there. I think it's a good point that you kind of made as well was especially when selling the ebooks or online information products is that you kind of you do have to create yourself as a personality as a go-to as an authority you can't kind of just be a bit of a mediocre a bit of a nobody and think you can kind of slap together a bit of an ebook and then put it out there and and be selling it like hotcakes. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's let's actually t- touch a little bit more on kind of the creating the online products in the fitness, the fat loss, the weight loss, the physique world. Okay. Where do you see the winning formula? Because this is really interesting that you said that because I've completely been turned off selling just kind of the information product and looking now to actually about to be launching a more inclusive, hands-on, give them more information and value type of product for them to really sink their teeth into where do you see the winning formula you know what i you know it I, first of all it depends how you define winning uh to be honest chris i yeah. mean if if your definition of winning is just being a hot chick and taking ass pics on instagram <laughs> you know that can that can actually earn you a really good living there's, I don't there's have people the out booty there for that yeah i know you look at a girl like jen selter Paige hathaway these are people that are mm. earning crazy livings that mm. started on instagram just yeah. from taking ass pictures you know so if you ask them they might just say be hot, have a great ass, and that's how you win. That's how you make a lot of money. You know, I don't think I don't think it's quite down to that. You know, I think you have to practice what you preach. You have to blend science and practice. So we have a kind of a we have a kind of a mixed uh, or a polarity in the industry where you have the science guys that are saying, "Well, this research study shows that blah blah blah." So this doesn't work. Then you have the bro science side saying, "Well, this is what I've done for years, and I'm Jack, so this works." And yeah. I, I don't I I hate the polarity. I really do. Yeah. yeah. I I believe both approaches are important important to look at when you're writing your programs, when you're making your nutrition, you know, science tells us what we kind of already know. You, you don't have science without the bro science. In other words, you have to have a theory first, right? Yep. Um, before you can actually test it in the lab. A hypothesis. A hypothesis. And you either have to confirm or reject your hypothesis. Anyway, 
Uh, and you have to earn trust from your customers. So truthfully, I think the winning formula in the fitness industry, I think it's a combination. I think it's a, uh, a combination of kind of a membership, hands-on membership site um, where they can interact with you. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's a combination of information, videos. People need to see videos at this point. If you just have a info product with no videos, I think mm-hmm. you're kind of missing out. Mm-hmm. And I think, man, you know, nothing new is being done in terms of training or dieting. It's all just different spins off of things. But I think what people buy more is your personality. That's a great point. You know, and so... I think you have to be your, it sounds crazy cliche, but you got to be yourself and project the person that, you know, you want to and have your personality shine through. You know, there's some people that are successful because they go on YouTube and they just have these crazy rants all the time, right? They just rant, 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 and people love it. So they go on, they, they want to look at what information this person's putting out. Other people are very sciencey, right? You look at a guy like Lane Norton, man, he's a science, science, science guy. And a lot of people are into that because they can learn a lot from it. Yeah. Uh, some people are just hot. And so people go to look at their videos and pictures and that's how they start. So you have to have some element that people are attracted to or that people want to see and hear from you um, in order to have that winning formula. You know, and again, I... I yeah, I don't think I've personally found that yet. I think we're always kind of, um, you're, you should always be searching for yes. that winning formula. And if you think, I think you it's found always it, molding then that's when you're as dead. well, like kind of yes. fitting, because I definitely have found since, and I know you're probably finding the exact same now, you have a beautiful five month old daughter. Like when I became a dad, I was like, well, I'm not the 20 something year old dude that just has nothing to do but train and eat and be jack right. like do you know what i mean i've got businesses now i'm a family man like there's more to me and i'm i'm talking to a different set of people now yeah you know and it's it's your priorities right like you, you know i remember before i had my daughter you know it was great like i could i would sleep in till maybe eight nine o'clock i'd eat i'd train <laughs> I'd come home, I'd take a nap, I'd read, work a little bit, uh, go back to the gym, train a second time, come home, eat, work a little bit, and then hang out with my wife. Like that was my life. Well, now it's much different. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm right now it's 5, 16 a.m. where I am and I've been up for two and a half hours. Yeah. Uh, you know, I wake up a little before 3 a.m. every day so that I can work hard on my business. I can still train hard and still take care of my daughter and be a good, be a good dad and be a good husband, you know? Can I just ask on, on kind of like a productivity side of things? Do you find yourself waking up early now before the girls get up for you to do the work? Yes, yeah. that's the biggest exact thing. Same I, need, <laughs> I need to I need to get a quiet time to have yeah. get as much done as possible before my beautiful daughter wakes up and before my wife gets ready for work. Because yeah. you know, I I want to. I want my daughter to remember her youth as, man, dad was playing with me all the time. Mm, like, I don't want her to remember like, oh man, my dad, I just remember looking at the, seeing the back of his head as he sat in front of his computer screen. You know, I don't, I don't want that. And so for me, sleep is a sacrifice I'm willing to make at this point to allow that to happen, to allow me to take good care of my daughter and to take her to the park and to take her to the pool and go on walks and read to her and all that stuff. So brother, you are preaching to the choir because that's exactly how I feel. And I think that's so important. And I think that's that's the goal for what what the business should be to create, to create the life that you want to live. Yes. And that's so important to me. And it's great to hear you say that. And I, I just, that's awesome. That, that gives me some tingles. Um, <laughs> now, you brought up a, a, a point before about kind of like being you and having that uniqueness. And there was a question that I've got, I was going to ask later, but I think this segues really perfectly into it is how important do you think creating like a real brand and a real personality and having the real chops behind it? Do you know what I mean? Like actually yes. being like, hey, you know what? I have trained people to an elite level. I have succeeded at this. I have achieved X, Y, Z because I find in the fitness industry and especially in the online game, it's saturated, but there's so many fakes out there as well. But kind of having that real deal and that just reality can be so solid. Yeah. You know what? It's incredibly important to create a real brand and have chops behind it. You know, and I'll talk about this a little later, but like you have to have worked you have to have done some time in the industry and and gotten results in order to yeah. effectively market yourself, you know? And and the other thing of it too, Chris, that what people don't realize, this is counterintuitive to every single thing that you may think 
but you should give credit where credit is due and always continue to learn. I mean, so many people in the online fitness industry want to portray themselves as I have the answer. Like I created this, uh, this is what I did. There is nothing wrong. And in fact, I believe you actually gain more credibility if you say, man, I learned this idea from Chris Dufay. He showed me this and this is how I twisted it uh, to better suit my needs. You know, yeah. rather than saying, I created this from the ground up. Because yeah. it's not true. There's nothing new. Uh, like I said, there's nothing new in training that hasn't been done since the 1800s. There's nothing new in nutrition that hasn't been done to some extent. So, I mean, you have to give credit from where you learned something. And actually that will improve your credibility because it builds trust with people. I you think know, it's it, so it builds- true. You've just got to always be learning. And it's just funny because it brings up like straight after this comp, I was like, right, what's my next goal? What do I want to keep doing, say, with my physique side? And I've already booked in. I had one consultation this morning and I've got another one this evening with people and I'm going to be saying, what do you think I should be doing? Do you know what I mean? I want to learn yeah. from I want to learn from them and get some bigger insights. And I think you've always got to have that beginner's mindset and not kind of think so like put your head out of your ass. Like you yeah, don't you know, know everything and you need the, to keep one, learning. One of the best examples of that that I could think of, it's incredible. So at the Poliquin Strength Institute, they used to have the uh, Aleco Strength Summit and they would bring yeah. in just top-notch guests, like world-class Olympic lifting coaches, sport training coaches, powerlifting coaches, etc. And uh, Al Vermeil was there <laughs> teaching, right? And Al Vermeil, uh, now he's probably 72 years old. He can still do like 15 chin-ups. He sprints every morning, all this stuff. He's an awesome dude, right? So Al Vermeil, um is the only strength coach to have world championship rings in two different sports. So he has a Super Bowl ring with the San Francisco 49ers, and he's also... Uh, got an NBA championship with the Chicago Bulls. So he was he was the strength coach for the Chicago Bulls during this Michael Jordan era, right? Mm. He also coached in Major League Baseball, right? So he's literally the most badass of badass sports strength coaches. And he is so incredibly humble. I remember he was talking about some Olympic lifting progressions. And uh, there was a, a few elite Olympic weightlifting coaches that were in the seminar. And he stopped his presentation to ask them questions during his presentation. And he started changing his slides based on their feedback during the presentation. <laughs> then this just blew my mind. I'm talking to him later and we were talking about like lifting with chains and bands and stuff. We were down in the weight room and I was doing some stuff. And uh, I found out that he actually lives 20 minutes from me here in Cincinnati, okay. Ohio. And uh, he goes, hey, he goes, can you, he goes, I've never, I haven't seen this before. He goes, do you think you can come to my house sometime? He goes, I got a full gym. He goes, you think you can come to my house and show me how to do the bands and all this stuff? And I was just blown away. I was just like, oh my gosh, like I'm a nobody. And here you are so humble to admit that you don't, you know, there's something that you don't know and you yeah. want to learn it. Like, and, and I think that's critical. You know, that's it's, awesome. it's something you got to continue to learn and you can't be afraid to ask questions. No, I like that. I like that a lot. Fuck, that just threw me straight off. I really enjoyed that story. (laughs) I think so many people can take a lot away from that because if you think you know everything, you know nothing. And that's the thing I I find every time I'm learning something more, I'm kind of always saying, shit, I really don't know anything. Like There is just the rabbit hole is going so much deeper. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So now let's transition over to you mentoring other trainers. Fill me in with how this works, how you actually work with your clients and what are you actually covering with them? Okay. So the mentorships, mentorships and online coaching are kind of two separate things. The online coaching is when people come in and and they have a certain goal, whether it be to lose body fat, gain muscle, uh, improve their powerlifting total, whatever it may be. And then I, you know, write them programs, write nutrition plans and do all that online. My mentorships are for coaches or trainers. And basically it's completely customized. So basically I, I have them kind of tell me what they want to learn. And I create a little mini presentation of basically my views on the topic. I provide samples. If it's, if it's a workout consultation, I provide samples. If it's a nutrition consultation, I provide nutrition plans. I provide recommended reading and I give an assignment. So mentorships are minimum five sessions long. So I yep. have to, if you book a mentorship, you have to at least book five sessions and it's literally customized. So it can be over whatever topics the trainers are comfortable learning or that they want to learn. And obviously it's got to be stuff that I'm comfortable teaching, you know? So if, 
if it's something out of my realm, which there hasn't been yet, but if there's something out of my realm, I'll simply tell them, sorry, I can't help you. You know, if someone wants to know the molecular blah, 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 of string theory, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help. You. And so basically, yeah, I've got some people that have done like 10 to 12 mentorships with me. I got other awesome. people that are just starting out. And like I said, it's totally customized. It's all done via Skype and email. Um, they have assignments to do. So I want them to take the information and then do a practical application of it. And then I kind of grade it. I don't grade it, but I go over it yeah. with them yeah. at our next mentorship. I talk about what they did great, what I might have done differently, how they can improve it. And so it's kind of like as a trainer, you get to hone your craft as you go through the mentorship. And it, it basically what I view it, it's like a fast track to uh, to more knowledge because they get to make their mistakes on me instead of on clients. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And get immediate feedback as opposed to having to wait 12 weeks to go, man, my training cycle didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, They get absolutely. instant feedback of like, hey, that's not going to work. <laughs> you know, so bloody valuable because it's obviously fast tracking what's going on and avoiding so many mistakes. Exactly. And so in, in another aspect of the mentorships, uh, um, a couple clients have taken uh, advantage of this is doing case studies. So if people have like problem clients, I basically have them dump all the information they have, like tell me everything they've done training wise, nutrition wise, lifestyle wise. And then I try to see where the holes are and I give them an approach to help that client uh, awesome. start getting results again. I think this is great because I really wanted to highlight this because obviously what you're doing is so good with the actual trainers, but also showcasing that the actual what you're doing is so different to what or so many other people are teaching. Do you know what I mean? Like you're sitting yeah. there going like, I will just do this on the spot, fully customized for you right now. And that is so valuable for each and every one of your clients to be able to learn that stuff. And I think so many people just don't even think that's possible to do. So I think that's absolutely ripping that you've been able to do that. Oh, thank you, Chris. All right. Now, awesome. last two questions, Ryan, before I let you go. And I ask all the people in the Turning Pro Academy these two questions. I just want this to roll straight off your tongue. Just hit me straight up. Ready? Yep. What is your definition of happiness? Ooh, dang. Straight off the tongue, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> having people to love, fun things to do, and work that you enjoy. Oh, I like that. All right. Numero duo, what are you grateful for today? My wife, my daughter, my parents, my house, my food, my business, you, Chris Dufay. Oh. Uh, I'm grateful for the day. I'm grateful for the water that I get to drink. You know, some people don't even have water in this world, yeah. so it's yeah. important. I'm grateful for water and food and all that stuff. Excellent. I really like that, man. I think it's just so important because I find everyone that I'm getting the privilege to interview and get on these podcasts obviously so successful each and everyone in their own way as well but it all kind of comes back to you know what you can be grateful for so many things like even having a pair of fucking shoes like yeah. that's something seriously to be grateful for and i see it living here in bali i see people that do not have shoes and like right we donate a lot of stuff and i think you just there's always something to be grateful for and as soon as you start having a bit of a pity party like you got to pull yourself out of that quick smile absolutely chris i i know you want to wrap this up i want to i know this is kind of talking about online business and how to build your business can i make one final you can do piece of whatever advice? you want <laughs> thank you i have to i have to say this because tell me come um, on. yeah we we've talked a lot about the business and improving yourself and getting your personality out there but i feel like i have to say this because it's kind of a key thing that people have overlooked and it's one of the things that kind of pisses me off in the industry yeah you like you have to earn your stripes and people people want to go from they want to go from a nobody to instant fame in two weeks you know you got a guy you got a 140 pound dude with a six pack that's dieted for two weeks and think they deserve to be millionaires <laughs> um you know, or get a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. You know, it's not fair that people that, you know, don't have experience, but they're rolling the cash, but you know, the best coaches in the industry have put in the time in the trenches and they've earned it. You know, you look at a guy like Charles Poliquin, love him or hate him. I mean, I could say some good things about him and some bad things about him, but he made a name for himself before the internet. You know, people in the U.S. knew about him from Canada and wanted to train with him. That's before the Internet. That doesn't happen by accident. You know, and so a lot of times when people ask for advice, one of the things that drives me crazy is they'll ask me, how do I get more likes on Instagram or how do I get more follows? And I think I, I said, instead of asking for more likes or follows, ask how to get better at your job. Yeah. You know, if you're good at what you do, people will find you. You look at a guy like John Meadows. Mm -hmm. The guy's been 
around forever but he's really only blown up in popularity in the last probably five years but like he's been doing what he does for 20 years or so Mm. so you know you look at the military you know among other requirements you have to have at least 22 years of time in service before you ever get to become a colonel and from there you need a presidential nomination to become a general so you you know you don't get that position in the military without earning it so it's like people in the fitness industry want to become a general before they've ever even been a lieutenant you know what i mean and so when i talk about earning your stripes i'm talking to my, my advice to people that are starting out is put in time and work for free to gain experience yes i said free you know clean machines wash jock straps make protein shakes and then once you're a hard worker once you've established yourself as a guy that gets the job done start to ask questions of the people that are supervising you and they will recognize you and start to promote you and then you, you know the, the flip side of this is you have to jump at opportunities earning your stripes funny funny enough often helps you find opportunities because you'll be ready when an opportunity arrives you know when i look at my career path 100 percent of it has been determined by others offering me an opportunity <laughs> it's not self-made it's not it's none of that you know I, I can i can think back to all the people along the way starting in college who basically helped me get the next job essentially you know i, ha- I have a buddy he was actually his wife was in my wedding um he is the director of global something or other at uber he his net worth is 1.2 billion with a b dollars right now um and he's my age and the funny thing is is he landed this whole thing just by responding to a tweet that a, a venture capitalist put out about a new business so he was the ceo of uber for a while and then he created it an explosion and basically he got demoted because now you know he started as the ceo of a small company but then it soon became a big company and they realized that he you know they needed to bring in an actual ceo not a 28 year old kid <laughs> and uh but he's still, he has shares in the company, $1.2 billion net worth. And a lot of it is because he jumped at the opportunity with something as simple as responding to a tweet. That's awesome. um, so earn your stripes, jump at opportunities. Don't bitch and moan if, if your program isn't blowing up yet or if, you're, you know, if your ebook or whatever isn't selling yet. You got to put the time in and you got to take opportunities and you got to keep your nose to the grindstone. I'm sorry, I had to, no, I had to get I all really, that in. I, yeah, I really appreciate you saying that because I just absolutely believe that. And I think so many people are just trying to bypass the actual hard work and the experience. Um, that's, you've nailed it on the head. And I, I that that just absolutely made my day. That, that was awesome. <laughs> all right, man. Sorry. I, I know you were like trying to wrap it up, but I was like, ah, I haven't like made this point yet because it's something that weighed heavily no, on my mind. That, it's of- absolutely brilliant. I can, I've got a, my, my own massage therapist. He's waiting for me here in my villa. And I was like, nah, this is, this is going to be worth it. And it's so <laughs> worth it. All right. Well, have, have a good massage, buddy. Thank, Thank you, you brother. Me on. I appreciate it. I'll try not to be thinking of you, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, right. We all know you're gonna be, we all know you're gonna be thinking of me, especially no. during the happy ending, right? <laughs> oi, oi, oi. All right, Ryan, I really appreciate you taking the time for me and the listener. You've just you've given some serious advice that I know and I really hope sinks home to so many people and I just am so appreciative. I'm very grateful for it, mate. A big thank you. Thank you, Chris. So now it's time for you to click on over to chrisdufay.com. That's chris, D-U-F-E-Y.com to get all the guides and show notes. And if you are wanting the workshops where I walk you through how to build your online business, click on over to chrisdufay.com forward slash start here. This is where I can give you the exact training guides and the workshops for exactly where you're at and the answers that you need. Now, every Friday, I'm coming back to you with a new episode. So be sure to subscribe. And if you haven't already, you're going to be getting the world's best insights, the advice and the answers to give you the business, the money, the freedom and the success and happiness that you want. And I want to give you a huge muchas gracias for being here with me. And as always, get in touch with me via the site or via social as Ask the Pro is about me giving you the answers that you need. So ask away. 